Good morning. I'm Pastor Mark Miller of Central United Methodist Church. And you know, I, my favorite comic strip, one of my favorite comic strips, has always been Peanuts. Uh, and, and maybe for you too, the Peanuts comic strip. And there are a couple I've been thinking about in particular this morning. One in which Charlie Brown simply makes this statement, life is like a 10-speed bicycle. Most of us have gears we never use. And that may be true for us during this time when we're learning new things, when we're being uh, faced with social distancing and sheltering like we've never done before. And, and we're learning new gears which we can uh, move into and, and ways that we are, uh, different ways that we are practicing life. And, and there's another uh, comic strip uh, that Charlie Schultz as the creator of Peanuts shared. And that one had Lucy and Charlie Brown in it. And Lucy said, you know, Charlie Brown, life is like a deck chair. Like a what, Charlie asked. And Lucy said, well, have you, have you ever been on a cruise ship? Passengers open up these canvas deck chairs so they can sit in the sun. Some people place their deck chairs facing the rear of the ship so they can see where they've been. And others, others place their deck chairs forward so they can see where they're going. On the cruise ship of life, Charlie Brown, which way is your deck chair facing? And Charlie answered, I've never been able to get one unfolded. <laughs> and maybe that's how you feel now. Maybe things are so confusing and so different that you feel like you haven't even been able to get your duck, deck chair unfolded. And uh, that's a, a challenge to you. That's frustrating for you. Or perhaps you're a person who is looking back at what you've missed uh, during this time, during this new season of social distancing and sheltering. Uh, maybe you don't like what is happening. And so you're looking back and wishing you could go back to that time again uh, that you are, are used to. Maybe you're kind of regretting that you're uh, not really wanting to do the things that we realize are safe and that are smart for us. And so you look back and, and kind of wish that things were the way they used to be. Or perhaps you're looking forward and asking uh, good questions like, hey, what have we learned during this time? A and how can we establish new practices and new traditions, especially as we are the church? How can we still be loving? How can we still be hospitable during this time without any hugging or any touching, any shaking hands or any pats on the back? And have we been finding new ways that we will continue to be uh, creative in discovering new traditions and new protect, uh, new practices of extravagant hospitality? This certainly has been a, a time of challenge. But it's also been a time of discovery for us as a church, a time to adopt a, a new season of sharing the love of Christ. And I use that word season on particular because I want to share with you a scripture passage that you have heard before or that you have read before. And it's from the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And here's again, here are these uh, words that we hear from Ecclesiastes 3. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. We know that so well now. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate a time for war, and a time for peace. I think those words are especially good for us to hear today and are very true. And I invite you on our Facebook page to 
share uh, things that you have learned during this time and this unique period of history. What have you learned and, and how can we uh, move forward as a church? What ideas do you have for us to be able to continue to be the church and move forward in this new season of, uh, of social distancing, this new se season, season even now of sheltering? And when we're able to get back together as a church together uh, and to have public worship and to share together, uh, what will be our new practices in being safe uh, because we'll need to do things a little different than how we've done things in the past. So I invite you on this Facebook page or when you're having conversations together uh, over the phone to uh, share these uh, different ways that we are considering of how we can be the church. But thank you for continuing to be the church. Thank you for continuing to look out for one another uh, and encouraging one another. You all have been done such a good job of doing that. Now I'd like uh, for us to have just a word of prayer together, please. Dear God, we realize that sometimes we think the opposite of fear is hope and courage, or maybe strength. <laughs> but really, the true opposite of fear is faith. Uh, faith in what we know to be true about you, O oh God, and faith in your love, faith in your care for us, and your ability to provide for us in, in all of our need, your ability to uh, protect us uh, during this time of uh, coronavirus that we have been uh, dealing with. And thank you for, uh, for your peace, that we have faith in, in your peace, that we experience your peace in, in, and your rest. And we know that you will help to carry us through anything that we face. And so we depend upon uh, your peace and your promise of protection. We remember in Isaiah, uh, that Isaiah writes, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. And so, God, we do trust you because we realize that faith conquers fear. And, and we'll admit that we have anxiety over this situation, and there has been a much fear that we have faced in our, our community and throughout the world but we grow to trust you more so that our faith may be strengthened and especially in these uncertain times. This is a time of a new season and we thank you that we are still the church. We thank you that we still abide in your love and that we share other with others in your love as well. We walk by faith and not by sight. Even if it's a new and creative ways from that are different from what our practice has been in the past, we still know your love and we walk according to your love and we are still the church and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.